Hey buddy, Thomas here. So I'm trying something completely different. I actually am wearing a mic because I don't do it on myself very often, but the first time I shot this video, it was YouTube gold. I mean, it was great. So I'm wearing this mic that's on a cord. I'm gonna try my best not to screw this up. All right, so what I have on the log, this is gonna, what I have on the mill, this is uh, gonna be 1.5 of the part 1.5 of the building the, the stair steps of Black Walnut. I've got my water going. I'm gonna go and crank up the sawmill. I'm gonna kind of walk through what I just did on the first cut, but I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this log uh, 180 and kind of show you the combination of controls here. Put on my headphones. So now I'm probably talking even louder and I apologize, but I wanna make sure you can hear this and see what I'm doing. All right, so when you turn the saw on, I like to hit the glow plugs just for a little bit, especially if it's cold and everything. But when you actually crank the engine, you have to hold it down. As you hold it down, it's actually going to start that fuel pump for a couple, probably about a second and a half, two seconds before it actually starts. Uh, it's going to interesting. All right, so typically when I load a log on here, I have my front and rear tow boards uh, up. Now I'll go ahead and put them up right now. And I'll talk about why I have this up. So if you've ever tried to take a, a log or uh, a group of boards off the sawmill without tow boards, there's not a lot of room to get in there with the forks. What these tow boards allow you to do is actually get up in there and uh, pick it up so you're clearing and you, you want to avoid hitting your energy chain. I've never had to touch the energy chain on this one. I have buddies who have had if you pop off the energy chain links, they're difficult to put back together. So by lifting the log up like this, it's easy to get the log off. And to tell you the truth, whenever I load the log, I kind of, I use my tractor most, and very rarely do I use the you know, loader unless my tractor can't lift it. But when you load the log, I gently roll it towards the log stops on the left hand side, which are controlled by this second uh, knob right here. I have them up, I roll the log to them, and then I lower it down until it makes contact with my tow board, and then I come out easily without having to get uh, a fork stuck. When I get onto the mill, I like to have my log spike up, up and down control with this, this lever right here. I move the head up so you can actually see down the length of the log. All right, so this lever right here controls the up and down of the log spike. This second control over here is makes sense because the match pair goes in and out. Now everything I'm doing right now is at idle. You really should be doing this at you know full out. However, for the sake of the video it makes it easier. The tow board, your rear and front tow boards. Rear and front facing the orientation of the mill. Front is towards the front where the hitch is, rear is towards you. So I like to you know take those both down at the same time, drop the log. The reason why you have the tow that uh, log stop up there is exactly what just happened there. That log spike. The log started to roll. If you didn't have that there on a really goofy log, you could potentially roll your log off. You, won't, you don't want to do that. Um, all right, so we've got the log stops up. Now I'm going to use my log turner and my chain. It's a bi-directional chain uh, based on the direction that you put this. Now, I've got to turn this log 180. So you bring the log turner up until you pin it up against your log stop. That gives you some bite, uh, some traction on there. Then you use your log turner based on the orientation. If I wanted to go the other direction, I use it sometimes to push it up against there. You can't really turn a log onto itself unless it's round. Uh, when you have a squared up log like or semi-flat log like this, uh, it's not as easy to turn that direction. However, that fine little adjustment, the, the ability that you have to do that is great when you're trying to handle big logs. All right, so I'm gonna turn this log up. So I turn, to turn it in the counterclockwise direction, you take this handle down. And I like to operate at both at the same time because the diameter of the log changes as you're turning. So you'll bring this one in or out based on how big the log is. So there we go, I'll go ahead and continue turning it. Bring it in a little bit, pin it up. Now I'll start bringing it out. Yep. Now I've got the log completely turned over. If you saw my other black one video where I screwed up, it had the log actually stuck on one of my tow boards or my log stops there. 
and I didn't get the best cut on the last cut, I'll show you how to fix that. One thing you can do is you can take your log spike, bring it all the way down, that's up there, and bring it in. The cool thing is, you can now use this as a log mover. You can bring it up, I can move that log left or right because I'm essentially using that hydraulic uh, pressure there. I, I, it appears unclear, so I'll bring it back down, bring my log stop back out, bring it up. And what I want to do is I want to pin it up against the log stop on the other side. Now, yes, you can you can press the log over at full up when the, when the extension of the uh, log spike is all the way up. I feel like you're adding an additional wear and tear on it. So I like to try to keep it as low, you know, pretty low, so it's safe. Now, I'll go in hard and then kind of come out and then go in gently. Now, my log stops on the left-hand side. Again, I'm gonna bring them down to below the blade height. So now I'm safe uh, to cut through the log. Now, what I need to go ahead and do is bring my head down and I'll show you how the computer works. So I keep on looking up and looking at my water. So I'm bringing the head down. I want to stop it about two inches or so above where my log is. And I'm going to go ahead and set my return. What this does is it sets a known point on the sawmill. That's the point at which when you go through the log, when you hit auto saw up, it comes up to that. That's your safe area. When you come back, you're not going to hit. The worst thing we do on a sawmill is to either go backwards while cutting that's automatic blade removal tool, or if you do not clear the logs when you're coming back with the blade engaged, again, automatic blade removal tool, and then you just shear it off, pop through some teeth, broken a blade, and you've had a bad day. All right, so I've set my height where I want it. I've looked down the log. I'm gonna go ahead and hit auto side down. The first one, it may not move. Okay, I moved a little bit there. So I'm measuring from the top down. So that probably only moved a quarter of an inch, half inch. I didn't really see the numbers beforehand. But I know now, my next time I hit this auto saw down, it's gonna go in a full inch and seven eight. Auto saw down. So now I look at the log. Okay, I'm still, I'm barely touching. I'm gonna go down one more. There we go. Now I know that this cut is going to go into the log and actually hit some wood. The worst thing, and every, every sawyer's gonna do this, while you're cutting through and you just think, you're trying to maximize that log if you're just doing a skim cut. All you're really doing is dulling the blade. It's, you know, you gotta go in strong. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and gauge the clutch. Now, one thing you always wanna do in this mill, and if you see my videos, you'll see I do this a whole lot. I rev up, I rev down, I engage the clutch, I disengage the clutch. The reason I'm doing that is you do not want to engage the clutch at full out, at, at full throttle. It's, it's rough on the equipment. You wanna make sure you're maximizing life that clutch so you engage it at idle speed. On this sawmill you can do that. On my other sawmill, uh, the Trimmer King 4100 with the diesel, you had to engage it about a mid-range uh, section. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and engage the clutch. Uh, also, your guide roller in and out right here. Fancy tool, I'll use it quite a bit. Especially on the bigger logs. It's, just, it's so convenient to have to get out there and, and manually turn something. And then, especially when you're cutting through a log, like crap, I'm not gonna clear. I was underestimating the logic was clear. Alright, so I'm gonna engage the clutch. Pretty quiet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and engage the throttle. I'm just gonna hit one hit up and goes full throttle for me. Yeah, one of the diesel engines. So what I do on this side right here, I hope I can see this in the film or you can see this in the video here. This is your controller for your hydraulic speed. This is forward and back. Hydraulic control is all the way to zero. Saw has that move. If I move it back, Back, so we'll move back. So go ahead and this is like my little routine. I'll engage, I will set the one forward down to zero, and then I start easing into the log once I uh, find the speed. So ease into the log nice and slow. And then as I'm cutting into the log, I may adjust the speed at which I uh, go through the log. If I come to a narrow spot, I might speed up. If I go to a really wide spot, spot, I might uh, slow down. And it's all controlled by this little speed control. Your valve right here is going to be fully open because you always want to keep the head moving in the forward direction. Again, head moving in the aft direction through a log with the blade on is a blade removal tool. Not advised. Continue to cut through the log. 
and I'll show you the auto saw feature. So the cool thing is, is, each time I hit that auto saw up, it goes back up to the set location, the set return, the home spot that we've marked. And then, when I come back, I'll hit auto saw down. It already knows the next progression, and it's uh, counting down. And since I'm measuring from the top down, so I'm at the end of the log, auto saw up, and it goes up to that safe the height above the log, bring it back. And now at this point, I will sometimes turn my control knob back down to zero. So whenever I go into the log, you, you kind of set up your own team. Now I'm going to go auto saw down. Go to the next location. It knows nine and three quarter inch. So enter into the log kind of slow. Again, this computer really just makes you a better story. It uh, takes a lot of guesswork out. I do use my magnetic scale that's on the side of the mill, but I don't use it that much. What I really use it for is I'm, if I'm getting pants, say if I'm looking for an 8x8 pants, I'm not really going to use the computer to do that because the computer takes into consideration the perfect place. And when those pants don't need that, um, I just need to uh, get an 8x8. So I will, I will touch that. Another time I use my magnetic scale is when I'm moving the head up and down a, a large amount. What that uh, magnetic scale allows me to do is slow down the head movement before I get to the number I'm looking to get. Especially on those uh, dimensional cuts where I'm looking for 6x something or 8x something. Now once I get into that 8x or the 8 inch stock or the 6 inch stock, then I'll use my auto saw feature on the way down. All right, so get auto up. Now I'm essentially done with these cuts right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the clutch. Disengage the clutch, again, bring the head back. And I know that I'm safe because my first cut on the way back, I was safe, I did not hit anything. Every once in a while, you get a forward that bows up on you. It's pretty hard to turn. Turn the throttle down. I always throttle down before you turn it off or anything, or go and turn the key off. So that's essentially the easy controls there. But back to my story on, on the boards. You'll get a board sometimes that will bow up on you so much that you really sometimes, when you do that first cut, if you see that board move, you really need to check, okay, is my set return height high enough even with that bow in the board? You get some pretty extreme ones sometimes, but you never know. So again, I hope this has been informational. This is a just a little video to show some of the functions and features of the sawmill and what it can do. Another cool thing, that's a pro, con, whichever, it's however you want to look at it. This computer, as you see, it's on even though the sawmill's off. Uh, which, you know, that's fine, but if you leave it on and say you're away from your mill for a week, you might be hating yourself because then now you got to get a... Uh, a charge on that battery. Uh, also, your guide roller is something else that you can continue to, to use when the sawmill is actually off. Pretty neat function because whenever you're changing a blade, that's very critical. You don't have to crank the entire mill up to do what you want to do. You just come over here, you bring your guide roller all the way in so you get your blade off and then go from there. So that's it in a nutshell. I'm hoping at this time it, it ran through quite well and I hope this is informational. Now I'll come over here. Yeah, I'll do a couple shots of the uh, the wood as she came off the mill, so you can see how pretty this black walnut is. Thanks. Okay, so this is the wood we just cut. It's the again the black walnut. And this shows you when it's fresh cut and it's on the mill and it's still nice and wet and everything because you literally just cut it. There's some pretty stuff there. Now I'll show you what it looks like minutes later just from sitting in the sun so again you see there's a slight greenness to it and you see the you know the tan sides everything and you see a little bit of darkness right here okay just cut and this has been sitting in the sun for maybe i don't know the time it took me to make the video 15 minutes not too bad it's uh it i don't know if it's called oxidation but it it uh it changes color pretty quick it's changing right there. it is changing right there so again this is uh gonna be those stairs this right here golly this is gorgeous because you know typically 
typically you don't want to see the white part or the tan part on black walnut. However, it's got a little spalt to it. So black walnut some spalt. The other side, yeah, it's gonna look really good, but you know what? This ain't that bad of a looking piece either. I can make something, maybe a bench top, plant it down a little bit, get a little more of the darker color in there, but then still, you know, capture some of the spalt that you see. That's pretty. Okay, this is the finale of the cutting portion of the black walnut for the stairs. I got 13 inch and 7 8 slabs out of this, these two logs. And these two logs came out of one tree. In fact, that tree section, if I'm mistaken, I only had uh, three or four sections with it. But uh, the other two sections are still up in Tennessee. I think I brought... Uh, the larger two sections maybe yeah I think so but uh, pretty impressive and in fact I actually have a little bit more here on the ground on the back side too but uh, yeah very happy with the way that this loadout went now I have to determine out of here which ones are going to be for the stairs as well as I was just talking to the gentleman who was uh, wanting this and He's also looking at potentially doing a table. So there are some unique pieces down here. I'll have to figure it out. Pretty impressed though. Hope you enjoyed uh, the cutting portion. And now the next portion I'll do uh, the planing and the sanding. And we'll go from there. Stay tuned. Thanks.